In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the three main things that could happen if a housing bubble popped in 2021. We all know that there's so much speculation in the air and a housing bubble popping or a housing bubble happening isn't something that's out of the ordinary. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's video. So we already know what happened in 2008. We know that the American government was encouraging citizens to buy homes and the banks were making loans accessible and as easy as it could be. With the housing market rallying up, hedge and insurance companies were rushing to create mortgage-backed securities. And then pretty much what followed after was the biggest property market bubble ever recorded. Years have passed since this you know, 2008 crash and the financial government has reshaped to prevent the reoccurrence of what happened. However, nothing is pretty much a safe bet anymore and bubbles can happen anywhere. In this video, we're gonna assess the possibility of a housing market bubble and the three things that could happen if it did pop in 2021. So one of the first things that we need to understand exactly and completely is what is a housing bubble? So if we look at investopedia.com and we're looking at the definition of what a housing bubble is, we can clearly see that a housing bubble or real estate bubble is uh, simply a run up in house prices fueled by demand, speculation and exuberant spending to the point of collapse. Housing bubbles usually start with an increase in demand in the face of limited supply, which takes a relatively extended period to replenish and increase. So the speculators are the ones that are pouring money into the market, further driving up the demand. And at some point, the whole thing pretty much explodes. And that's why we use the phrase, the housing bubble has burst. So what could cause a housing bubble in 2021? So 2021 is the new year, but 2020 was a volatile year that created a multiple and complex financial situations. By referring to this uncertain year, we might look at different possibilities that could create a housing market bubble. Among them include the following. Unsustainable housing demand in 2020. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the United Kingdom and the United States market noted increased demand in a property asset. This sharp surge in demand might be an indicator for an unbalanced equilibrium. Number two is the possibility of speculative behavior. One can't rule out the possibility of increased house flipping during the market surge last year. Another point is the low interest rates and government incentives could have caused unsustainable or artificial demand. Another point is the possibility of unregulated markets that attract to low lending and borrowing standards. This increases the demand for mortgage products, which can consequentially create a market of bad loans. The existence of bad loans, delinquencies and foreclosures contributed entirely to the 2008 housing market crash. So by assessing the causes I just stated, there's always a possibility of a housing bubble. But what would actually happen if this bubble were to pop in 2021 this year? One of the things that could happen if the housing bubble pops in 2021 is a real estate and a financial institutions crash. As expected, the first casualty of the housing market bubble is going to be the real estate industry. As the bubble pops, the industry capitalization would fall drastically. Speculators would be willing to sell at a loss. The mass ceiling would lower property assets drastically. On one hand, the mortgage companies would be seeking bailouts, while on the other hand, homeowners would find themselves in a precarious situation. These property owners would have mortgage dilemmas as it would mean owing the lending companies more than their property was worth. In such scenarios and accounting the economic situation of the time, most owners would lose their homes to foreclosures. The foreclosures would worsen the situation worse than it would already be. It means bringing more property to a market that is already bearish. As more supply is added to a declining demand, the market just keeps going down. Prices would fall massively, even forcing the lenders to sell their position at a loss. This cycle would continue for months before the equilibrium is achieved. Before the stabilization is achieved, many would have lost their homes, investors lost their money, and the real estate industry brought to its knees. 
The banks and mortgage lenders wouldn't be left out either. Mass credit and mortgage delinquencies would leave them in terrible situations. In extreme cases, huge financial institutions carrying these toxic assets in form securitized loans would make things even worse. The Lehman Brothers Bank is an example of a bank that carried these bad loans in 2008. After it was certain that the bank wouldn't get government help, it filed for bankruptcy. What followed was a disastrous market onslaught, where financial markets all over the world crumbled. If such an event did occur in 2021, the repercussions would be bigger than then, considering how the 2020 pandemic has already weakened and put a huge strain on this terrible economy. The second thing that could happen if the housing bubble pops in 2021 would be a follow-up stock market crash. So to predict what would happen in case of a housing bubble, we have to refer to the consequences of past bubbles. In 2008, after the property market crisis, the United States and the United Kingdom stock markets followed the downhill route. The stock markets crumbled as soon as the Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. Lots of stock market investors shorted their positions and massive sell-offs followed. In an event of a housing market crash in 2021, the sell-off would be even greater. This is in consideration of the bearish market of 2020, where most investors were caught unaware. Any signs of forthcoming crashes would see investors rushing out of the door. To understand how the stock market could crash from a housing market crisis, you have to look at the connection between the two. First of all, the United Kingdom and the United States of America stock markets are made up of significantly financial assets. In case of a loan and credit delinquencies, these financial assets values would go down as investors would expect them to go down. Furthermore, it is expected that hedge funds, banks and insurance companies often create mortgage-backed securities in the build-up to the bubble. If the bubble bursts, these hedge companies and insurance companies would lose lots of money. These losses would then be reflected in stock value declines of the related public listed companies. Cases of property bubble pops could also translate to microeconomic issues. Homeowners spending significantly goes down as they strive to repay their already pumped mortgages. As their spending power goes down, so will their consumption. And this ultimately affects some product companies listed on the stock market. Investors anticipating diminishing consumption may opt to liquidate their positions. On the other hand, investors wishing to take positions may be discouraged by pointing to the consumer index indicators. This would create a bearish stock market environment where investors fear taking position by reflecting to the property market decline. Stock market stability is also built around the investors' emotions. If everyone feels the possibility of a rallying market, then the market is highly likely to go up. If everyone feels the incoming bear market, then they're going to respond and follow the created sentiment. In cases of mass property sell-off, real estate industry capitalization decline, banking, banking bankruptcies and bailouts, the stock market will likely become bearish. In extreme cases, the sentiment may become too negative, prompting mass institutional and retail sell-offs. In other words, bearish sentiment would be the prime cause of the stock market crash. Even if no technical or fundamental connection existed between the two markets, it's less likely for the stock market to be bullish when the property market is crumbling. Furthermore, the investors' sentiment and emotions would be reinforced by looking back at the 2008 crisis. Unrelated stocks that weren't even real estate or mortgage orientated also crashed during that year. With that in mind, it's highly probable that a housing bubble burst would result in the stock market crisis. The third thing that could possibly happen if the housing bubble pops in 2021 would be a horrific global economic crisis. A housing market crash would spread beyond the borders. If this occurred in 2021, the recovering year of the COVID-19 pandemic, then the global economy would be in trouble. First, one would expect mass unemployment and household destabilization. As documented by Wealthsimple.com, by 2007 and 2009, 8.7 million Americans had lost their job. This was one of the sharpest unemployment rises since World War II. Similar effects would be felt across the globe as mass stock market crashes would affect many companies' financial structures. Most would be forced to cut down their wage bills in order to sustain their operations. And this wouldn't only happen in America, 
but across the globe, with multinational organizations cutting their labor spending. Consumer spending would drastically drop by the end of the year, and if people see stock prices fall, then they would massively cut their household spending due to their asset losses. For the wealthy, they would cut their investments in fear of future collapse, and this atmosphere would be witnessed on a macro level where pension payments would drop. With most pension investment trusts investing indirectly into the housing and stock market, any crash would mean lower pension payments in the short and medium term. Lower pension payments often translate to lower household spending and investments. If all this is happening on a global level, then the world economy would be heading for a recession. The recession would be a result of unemployment, low spending and investment on a occurring vicious cycle. The vicious cycle would be strengthened by the bank bailouts that would follow. Just like in 2008, banks were left with huge mortgage delinquencies. Others, like Lehman Brothers, had to use risky derivatives as collaterals for the bank loans and consequently left bankrupt. Banks like AIG were lucky to receive $85 billion worth of bailout out of the taxpayers' money. If this did happen in 2021, similar bailouts routes would be followed, costing these citizens enormous amounts of money. These bailouts have significant effects on economies. First, there is the moral hazard implication and risk. This means that banks may be motivated to take unnecessary risk as they know if it doesn't work out, the government aid will bail them out. Furthermore, these bailouts often have long-term economic effects on the country. It means taxpayers have to part with more tax to fund the government aids. This leaves them with less money to spend, save or invest. The cycle is then reflected on the economy as less spending affects manufacturing and service industries. As already seen, a housing bubble pop would lead low investment and a possible stock market decline. This scenario would create short terminism in the atmosphere on a global scale. This is where the shareholders want fast returns to recoup their losses, and companies are then going to feel this atmospheric pressure and be forced to take drastic cost reduction actions in order to increase their profits. This includes cutting wages, cutting costs, engaging in collusive activities to push share prices up, pretty much anything that helps companies survive, and the such actions can have devastating long-term effects on domestic and global economies. So what should you do in case of a housing market bubble pops? A housing market crash is always possible, and it could happen at any time of the market cycle. Nobody can predict it, and whenever it could happen, nobody knows. However, there's only one thing you can do. You can prepare. And how do you do that? You can prepare by having a clear investment strategy that protects you in case of a market collapse. This includes diversifying your portfolio and cutting out any emotions from your investing journey. If a crash does happen, don't panic. Trust your environment and your investment decision so that when the market rebounds, so will your portfolio.